Waking up, which is good. How did you sleep? I slept well. We are so late. Late for what? Late for all morning, dear. We're gonna get in trouble. We are. Oh dear. We do indeed. I love you. Love you too. So, we've been asked how living in quarantine mm -hmm. has been like. How's it been like for you? What's the time? Oh, it is 9 one. Okay, that is late. Why don't you look at me when I'm yawning? You have to get a bad breath smell. It's been really good. I actually think it's been an opportunity for us to become closer, to bring us closer together, which I didn't realise that we could <laughs> Not just physically closer because we're in the same room all the time. <laughs> <laughs> There's nowhere you can go. So I spoke to my nan a couple of days ago. Oh, I'm very thankful that she lives in the countryside and is able to like go into her garden and like plant some plants and these kinds of things in this time. I mentioned about how it's difficult to get toilet roll. And then she was saying about how like in the war, they used to just tie some newspaper on the back of the toilet door with a piece of string and that's what they would use. And, uh, and the toilet was outside. So we got it good. <laughs> we have, we've got things pretty good. And you think, well, the sacrifices and things that, that they had to make in times of World War, you know, rationing, properly staying at home, because if you go out, you might get bombed, you know, not having your lights on because you get bombed. What you can do is go inside, maybe go and work in a factory to build some weapons. Hope you don't get arsenic poison there. Come back home, eat your little cube of food for that night and just sort of wait for it to be over. The young men going out to war. Like imagine me going off to war and you wouldn't even know if I was all right. You wouldn't, you'd have to wait for weeks on end to receive some letter from me. And now if I go to the shop, she can call me and find out if I'm all right. And now <laughs> we're on lockdown here with the internet, can start up a business, can make videos, can watch TV, can order foods to our door. Can connect to people across the world yeah, and down even... the road. <laughs> And people complain about not being able to go to the shops whenever they want, but it's not really that hard, is it? <laughs> Pales in comparison. Yeah, yeah. Gives you a newfound respect for the challenges of our, of our elders and appreciation for what we have and for the life that we lead now. So, yeah. Even before quarantine, I realised how powerful our morning routine had to be. There's certain things that have to be done in order for me to function. Mm. And I think one thing about quarantine is it throws routines off. Yeah, it was a struggle to start with, for sure. And when routines are thrown off, stress and anxiety creeps in. Mm -hmm. I really applaud the fact that we managed to create such a strong morning routine or even just a routine, you know? Yeah. We wake up and first thing I might do is get us a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. <laughs> that was worth it for my mug. Silver lining is perhaps we become more connected with other people. Trying to stay connected with people has been really vital in keeping us sane. Despite being locked away from everyone else, the internet has given us an opportunity to connect together. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I did was set up a book club. We were meant to have a meeting in person, but our first ever meeting was online. And I have met some amazing people. Some people, that was the first time I'd ever seen them. Actually, now the book that we're reading has been a staple part of my morning routine. Wow, you put a lot more milk in than I do. Loads of milk. Sorry. I need to readjust my calories when you make me tea. But you've never complained about the taste. No, but that's what's concerning. So it doesn't taste significantly different, and yet it's probably triple the calories. We'll come back and meditate. And then we'll go through your book. 
the magic book that you're doing at the moment and discuss whatever task that might be for the day. Uh, do affirmations as yeah. well. And we do a devotional reading. It's all about connecting with things that are important to us first thing in the morning and saying your mindset for the day. So rather than waking up and just being reactive to everything, um, being, being proactive is very powerful to wake up and say, no, this first hour is for me. I'm going to tick off these things for me. Do you need a pun? Thank you. Oh, that's an essential. More pillows. Um, do you want more pillows? Yeah. So, meditate. I like the woman, I just don't like that meditation. The one that I did yesterday? Yeah, I don't like it. Huh. Sorry. Can I have a look down, please? Thanks. Do you want to do a bit of a longer meditation today? Mm, not really. Ten minutes is fine for me. Fifteen? Is that okay? Abundance is creative energy manifested. The creative voice. energy of the universe flows to you and through you. It I'll has try it. no I'll form. Try it. You have the ability to give it form. I imagine breathing out all the anxiety and tension you've been holding on to. Can I tea, please? I'm so hungry. Drink your water faster. Sometimes you feel hungry, but actually you're just thirsty. But my teeth gonna get cold. What did you think of it? It's okay. I struggled to get into it this morning. Well, you had quite a few distractions. Do you do a devotion? Today we'll discuss the known will of God. Seems like such an odd mix of guidelines to follow, doesn't it? Be joyful, pray a lot, show gratitude, do good, oh, and don't be sexually immoral. We want to change the world, but we don't consider it very important to change our part of the world, let alone ourselves. We want to know what he has for us tomorrow, but we disobey him today. We may not know the path ahead for us when it comes to our career, but we know that it is God's will for us to help others today. But we know that it's God's will for us to give thanks in all things right now. And we certainly don't know what our financial situation will be 15 years from now. But we know that it is God's will for us to be generous with our time and resources now. God is looking for people who are faithful. Do you tend to think of God's will in a more grand sense and not in day-to-day -day living? Yes. Yes. <laughs> what is one area of your life that would fall under God's known will that you need to obey? Gratitude every day. Who could we help today? How do we be of service today? There are five things to listen to today. Oh. Luke 16. Sorry, so babe, just pause it. Ask. Can you turn the brightness up? That's like practically unusable. Turn the F stop down a little bit and then, yeah, put the ISO on also. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve both God and money. What do you think of that? I don't know, there's a lot of conflicting messages in the Bible, isn't it? What was conflicting there? Put a division between rich and poor and say how it's, you know, say how you can't be rich and also love God and all these kinds of things. That's not what it said. It says you can't serve both money and God. Right, but then it talks about, you know, if you have a good life on earth, then you won't go to heaven. I think right. the whole point was, yes, he had worldly wealth, but he didn't use it well because he wasn't helpful he didn't help the poor if you're serving god and you have a lot of money then your money will be used to be of service to people i don't think it's saying you can't be both rich and you can't be both godly that's how i see it anyway well i don't understand this bit either i tell you use your worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it is gone you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings <laughs> I understand the first bit and it makes sense because like a lot of people are rich and they make friends that way. When you're rich you should be really generous with it so that when it goes you have people who can help you. I it says you'll be welcomed into eternal dwellings. I, t I assume that means heaven. I don't know. Should we or maybe it means hell. I don't know. Sounds a bit disingenuous doesn't it? 
so in the amplified version it says that you should use material resources to further the work of god so that when it runs out they will welcome you into eternal dwellings a lot of the affirmations and a lot of the meditations were all surrounding abundance that is something that we add into our practice every now and again but it's not everything it just so happens that that's what the bible was bringing up <laughs> the meditation we did was bringing up and so I think when things like that happen as well, I just feel at one with God, which is which is nice. Magic in Practice book is a book that was recommended for our second book club meeting. And it's all about gratitude and finding reasons to be grateful all the time. Yeah. And the main precepts is to those who are grateful, more good things will come. And it's impossible to be sad, anxious, stressed if you are grateful at the same time. And so something that we've done for the last five or six days is write 10 reasons why we're grateful. Day five. I am truly grateful for money. It has put a roof over my head and a bed to sleep in. Thank you money for working through my parents. I am truly grateful for this time in quarantine to get even closer with my wife. I am truly grateful for my headphones because Jack won't hear me fart. <laughs> I am truly grateful for this time as it has given me extra time to work on our businesses and towards our goals. With all my heart, I am truly grateful for the YouTube paycheck because we get money for doing what we love. I am truly happy and grateful for our YouTube channel because I love the positive comments. I love creating a positive space where people can really participate and get involved. With all my heart, I am grateful we have more than enough money. I think something that resonated with me, whoever can be trusted with little can be trusted with much. And I feel like a lot of our liberties, a lot of the things that we took for granted have been taken away from us. And now we're probably in a place where we have very little to work with. But if we can be trusted to get through this, then I just know that God will give us more. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I say yeah. little stuff. I think I've been entrusted to have you. I've been entrusted to have this space. And it's always about keeping myself in check, making sure that I'm managing our relationship, I'm managing our space, whether that's tidying up, mm -hmm. being grateful. Yeah. It's just about managing. You are perfect in all of your ways. Yeah, I think you're right. The universe comes together to communicate a certain message to you at a certain time. Our recent message has been being grateful and thankful for the abundance that we have at the moment. What's been really useful on those days when I've been working from home is that we have just been very much in our own separate worlds, haven't we? You can touch your toes in a week. I've never been, I've never been able to do it. Okay, well, um, what's it called? Down dog? Yeah, I'll get it. Nice one. Yeah, I mean, I'm so thankful for our Bose headphones, mm -hmm. noise cancelling, because it just means you can be on the phone, I can be working or mm. vice versa, and we just still get to get our work done. You know? So maybe that's the secret to quarantine, Bose noise cancelling <laughs> headphones. It could be, that is the secret. Beanie buddies. Walking along in quarantine. This is the first and only time we've left the house today. And you're still eating your donut. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, Guys, God. this quarantine. Mm -mm. We need help because them calories. No exercise. The other what day, do we do? The other day. Oh no, earlier today you tried to sneak in two biscuits before me. I did. Successfully. <laughs> I don't know why I told you about them. <laughs> I was in the kitchen. Uh, well, we were both in the kitchen making a cup of tea. In the time it took me to go for a pee and come back to the kitchen, Naomi had scoffed two biscuits. I could have done more. <laughs> and tried to hide it from me. <laughs> well, when something gets um, restricted or taken away from you, then you appreciate it more, right? Things like going outside for walks, like it is something that we used to do, but we've now made it pretty much a daily thing to go for a walk. Or get outside. Nice? 
just everything about this, the whole experience, yeah. seeing family, seeing friends, just going to the shop whenever you want, going for a walk, all of those things that get limited, you realise, which you appreciate it. Our government have done a lot. They smashed it. I've never been so proud to be British in my life. It's a big thing for you to say. But I am extremely blessed that we're in a position where the government is just funding the NHS left, right and centre. Well, they're funding everything, aren't they? Funding people who have been yeah. furloughed, jobs lost. Yeah, I'm amazed by the by the reaction. It's, it is amazing. I'm Very just, lovely. I'm so grateful. Compl and also grateful for the fact that we don't really need... Assistance. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, so grateful that they're doing it, but also grateful that we don't need it. None of our family needs it, do they? Can't think of anyone that we know, in fact. Unless, heaven forbid, one of us gets sick and has to go to the NHS. We're pretty privileged. We are. We were just saying, only in England will you wear a beanie and also sunglasses. It's mad, isn't it? Ah, I can't even. Now me. Now me, now me, now me. What you doing? Filming you. I'm filming you. Oh. Mm. I guess we're kind of going through normal-ish life. Sitting here has led us to boredom, which has led to many fun experiments with dancing. And I'm a savage. I'm a savage. Yeah. Classy, bougie, ratchet. <laughs> we're just finding ways to really keep ourselves entertained. <laughs> We are living in the best time ever, and for that, I'm grateful. I implore everyone else to be grateful also for the very little that you have. Mm. If you manage it well, and if you are faithful and grateful, the universe will only add more. Yeah, I'm grateful we cleared all of our debts and everything we've got. Strict monthly payments, which we're going to get bankrupted from. I feel bad for people who are going through that then. Yeah. There are a lot of people who live month by month wages, expenditures, so I'm not sure what advice to give those people. There will always be a silver lining. Whatever doesn't kill you will make you stronger and you can learn from whatever situation, however painful it is. I just think don't give up, do not give up. There is always a way out and it might not seem it now, but you'll figure it out. Don't figure it out. God will figure it out. You look very pretty. Thank you. I love you. I love you too. Can you give me a brown nose? <laughs> Why don't you get pee, Jack? Someone's in the toilet. Oh, well, they're done. They're done. This is why we need to wake up early so that we don't get toilet traffic. Exactly. I'm going to go first. Sorry about the background noise of cooking and washing up cutlery you might be able to hear. We were thinking about pausing and refilming this, but it is us surviving quarantine. And this is part of us surviving quarantine, living in the house, you know, other people in the house doing their thing, making noises. And yet we still have to get on and do our thing, don't we?